What's up you guys, Matt the Math Zero here and I am back today with a brand new video and I'm looking at multiplication. We're going to be doing column method. So let's not waste any time, let's get straight into it. One thing we need to learn before we can start is something called the commutative law. Now, horrible word, try and spell it, I don't think I can, but it's very important. So let's have a look at it, what it actually means. Let's have a look at this very, very basic multiplication question, three, three times five. Now, we can see 3 times 5 can be represented by 3 lots of 5 marbles, okay? And we can know, quite simply, the answer is 15. But what happens if I move our question around and have 5 times 3, 5 lots of 3 marbles? And we can see it again here. We get the same answer. And that's because multiplication is commutative. The numbers are commutative. It doesn't matter which way around we put things, we are going to get the same answer. That is very important when we come into working on harder questions. We need to understand that it doesn't matter which way around we do things, we can always get the same answer as long as we multiply every part of our question. Okay, so let's have a look at a bigger number. I'm going to have a look at 243 multiplied by 5. Now, I don't want to have to draw out 243 circles and put 5 marbles in all of them. That's going to take us all week. So today we're going to look at another method. We're going to learn column method. And for those of you that know what it is, great. You might have seen it in your addition. You might have seen it in your subtraction. But for those of you that haven't, stay tuned. We're going to look at it in multiplication. Okay, guys, so we're going to have a little look at long method first. Now, I strongly recommend doing this. You might not have seen this method before, but I strongly recommend this because it's a bit of a bridge between our previous method, our grid method, and our short method. It sort of breaks those, it sort of crosses those, that, that bridge. So we're going to drag our numbers down. I'm going to put my 2, my 4, and my 3, and I'm going to put my 5 underneath my 3. Why have I done that? Let's have a look. Let's set up everything else for a moment. You can see that my 243 can be represented with three units, four tens, and two hundreds. My five is simply just five units, so I need them to be represented like that. I'm going to keep them in the relevant columns, units column, my tens column, and my hundreds column. And I can strongly recommend to make sure when you're doing questions like this, you put your units, your tens, and your hundreds at the top there so that you can remind yourself that because it's the most important thing. We can't change the value of numbers. Now I've got three steps because I've got a three-digit number. If I had a four-digit number or a five-digit number, I'd have four steps or five steps. Or if I had a two-digit number, I'd obviously have two steps. So the steps is just decided by how many uh, numbers are in my my uh, how many digits are in my numbers. So let's begin. Where to start? Well, we always start at our smallest value. So in this case, we're going to start with our five multiplied by our three. We are partitioning our number. We're breaking it down into smaller, easier bite-sized chunks so that we can solve our question without the use of a calculator. So step one, five times three. Well, we know that's five, 10, 15. So I'm gonna put my 15 in step one. Simple, but again, making sure I'm putting my correct use of my tens and my correct use of my columns. One in the tens column, five in the units column. Make sure you're doing that. The simplest mistakes that can be made are when people are putting their numbers in the wrong column or squishing it into little areas. Step two, five times four. Now, it's not a 4, is it? Let's have a look at what column it's in. And this is where our understanding of place value and our column methods is very important. This is not a 4. This 4 is representing a 40. So the question is 5 times 40. Now, how are we going to solve that without a calculator? I don't, I don't personally like 5. I don't like 5 times 40. Hard question. We don't like hard questions. So I'm going to recognise my first placeholder. 5 times 40 is just 10 times bigger than saying 5 times 4. So if I drag my placeholder across, my answer is going to be 10 times bigger. 5 times 4, 20, put that back in. 20 in the correct column gives me an answer of 200. Okay, 20, 10 times larger, 200. Okay, step 3, 5 times 2. But we now know it's not a 2. This is in our hundreds column, so it's 200. So the question says 5 times 200. Now we might not want to work out 5 times 200, so we can use our understanding of place value now and understand that 5 times 200 is 100 bigger than, say, 5 times 2. Okay, so I'm going to put my two placeholders to represent 100 times bigger, put that across, and now I can just do 5 times 2. 5 times 2 is 10. I'm going to put my 0 in my 100s column, and now I need a brand new column, my 1000s column, for my 1, giving me an answer of 1000. 5 times 200 1,000. Okay, perfect. I've done all my steps. Step one, step two, step three. Finished? No, we've got a partitioned answer. I've got three answers because we broke our, our question into more manageable chunks. So now I've got three different answers that I need to bring back together for my final total. Okay, 
If you've never looked at plays at uh, Column Edition before, please have a look at our channel. You'll see a whole video for Column Edition if you need a little bit of help on that. If not, let's just fly through it. We know we're going to start with our smallest value, which is our units. Let's skip down our units column. You can see a 5. Go down our 10s column, 1. Go down our 100s column, 2. Go down our 1,000 columns, 1. Give me an answer of 1,215. Let's make sure we always finish our number sentence. Flick it back up to the top. Beautiful. So my 243 times 5 equals 1,215. Okay, great. Well done, everybody. Now, just interestingly, guys, if we had a four-digit number by a one-digit number, we would just have a step four. If we had a five-digit number, we would just have a step five, and we would understand our placeholders and things at that point. It doesn't make anything harder. It just makes it longer. We're still multiplying a multiple digit by a one-digit number, okay? And that's the same in short method or in long method. Now it's your opportunity to have a little practice. I've got three questions here for you. I've got 143 times four, I've got 546 times six, and I've got 625 times three. What I want you to do, pause the video now, try and use this method, this long method of multiplication to solve these three problems. I want you to solve the, uh, these three using the long method. Take this time now to pause the video, if you have any questions, go back, have a look at what we've just done together before moving on. Okay, so pause the video. All right, welcome back. If you pause the video and you got all three right, well done, fantastic, let's move forward together. If not, just take this time, spend a little bit longer, have a go going back, check where you went wrong, and correct yourself before you move forward. There's no point moving forward if we're not getting things right already, okay? So that's really important. Now let's look at the short method. This is the method we all want to get to. This is kind of our final stage of multiplication. It's really, really uh, ambitious. But it's really important that we've done the previous stages so that we have that cognitive understanding, that understanding of what's actually going on with the numbers and actually going on with our question. We don't want to fly straight to this method and perfect this because we don't actually understand what's going on if we do that. And if we ever forget one part of it, it's all just going to come tumbling down like dominoes. So we don't want to do that. We want to really understand what's going on so that when we move into the short method, we have a really solid understanding. So let's have a start, let's have a look at the short method. Okay, short method, we've got the same question, 143 times five. Now, we are going to set it up ever so slightly different because it's short, we only need one bar across it, or one equals bar to get our answer. But we're gonna make sure we've got our units, our tens, and our hundreds all at the top there because they're really important to make sure we are putting things in the right column. Remember, this is column method. We need to make sure we are doing things in columns and in the right columns. If we get something very wrong here, if we get something wrong here, it is very wrong. We're going to change the whole value of our answer and the whole value of everything, and we need to make sure that does not happen. So, units, tens, and hundreds at the top, very, very important to get into that habit. Now, one little tip for you, I want you to drag this bar down. Leave a column, leave a, leave a bar across there. Okay, we're going to use that in a moment, and you'll see why. Okay, so let's start with our units. Start with our smallest value, 5 times 3. So, 5 times 3, 5, 10, 15, 15. 1, 10 and five units. So I can put my units in because we're working out our units, but we've not solved our tens yet. So let's use this space we've just created to remember that my answer in my tens has got an extra one. So I'm gonna put my one across here to signify that's another one I need to add on in a moment. Uh, so put my five in, great, and I've got my one ready. Okay, let's look at step two, five times four. Now we know it's a 40, but in this case, because we're doing it all in the same, we're just multiplying our tens now, Five times four tens is 20. We've got 20 tens, but don't forget, this is the one we've got before. So we've got an answer of 21 tens, okay? Or 201 ten. So I'm gonna put my one ten into the correct space, into my bar, in the correct column, and I'm gonna move my 200 into my hundreds answer, okay? Okay, step three, five times two. Five times two is 10, but we've also got this other two that we need to remember Add that back on, so my answer is 12, 12 hundredths, okay? Now we don't have a step four, so I'm just gonna put it straight into our answer. We've got nowhere else to carry it on, so we've got a three digit number. So 1,215, making sure I put my thousand sign back up there just for good habits. Okay, great, let's check our answer, 1,215. That matches our long method, so we know we've done everything right. Well done, guys, perfect. Okay, great, now it's time for another practice. Let's use this time to have a look at these three questions, pause the video, try a new short method in order to solve them, okay? Now, short method is tricky. We can make small mistakes. So let's just give you a couple of tips that are gonna help you avoid those basic mistakes, okay? 
First tip, the most important one I think, is get those hundreds, tens and units really clear up at the top so you don't put things in the wrong column and you lay things out nice and neatly. Remember in maths, the neater we are, the less likely we are to make mistakes. Okay, so get those columns nice and, nice and clear. Once you've done that, drop that bar down. Give yourself a spare row that you can put your carryovers into. It's gonna help you avoid those small mistakes of missing a number that you've squeezed in somewhere because you've not given yourself enough space. Remember, spread your work out, make it look nice and clear. Okay, great, so pause the video now, take your time, work these questions out, and let's have a look at some answers in a moment. All right, brilliant, put the answers on the screen for you. Hopefully you've got the right, the right answers. If you've not, go back, check again where you might have made your mistake, look at the last part of the video, and correct any errors. But if you have, well done, fantastic. 10 minutes of worth of math lessons and you already got it. Beautiful, fantastic. Okay, now it's time for our recap. Let's have a little look at what we've done today. So we had a look at two methods. We looked at first the long method and then we looked at the short method. I've got them here side by side for us. Let's just remind ourselves exactly what to do from the start. First things first, we lay everything out properly. We put our 100 cents of news at the top so we can clearly make sure we don't get any mistakes and put things in the right value. Okay, after I've laid everything out perfectly, I can begin. I always start with my smallest value, which in this case is a seven times four. Put my answer in here, 28, fantastic. Then I'm gonna put seven times 10, get that answer in there, 70. And then I'm gonna do my seven times 600. Put that in there, 4,200. Beautiful, once I've done that, I can add it all together. It's the grand total, 4,298. Okay, short method. So same thing, lay it up, get your units, tens, and your hundreds in there. If you've got a four digit, you're gonna need a thousand, or if you predict your answer is gonna come over a thousand, get your thousand there anyway, why not? And then let's start with step one, doing our units again. For, uh, seven times four, seven times four is 28, but we don't put 28, we put our two into our tens column, ready for our tens answer, and we get our unit in our answer column, eight. Step two, seven times one gives us seven, but don't forget that other two leaves us nine. Nothing to carry on, just nine tens. Once you've done that, step three, seven times six is 42, nothing to add on, so just put it in there, we've got no more, no more to work out, so we need to get that straight to our answer box. Gives us a grand total again, 4,298. Our answer is the same, which means we've done it right. Well done, everybody, fantastic. We've used two different methods and we've got the exact same answer. Okay, let's just quickly discuss why we might use these two different methods and who wants to use what and when. If you're somebody that struggles a little bit with this and you're not quite sure what's going on when you're multiplying a big number, stick with the long method. It helps you to understand exactly what you're doing. You're partitioning it to solve the bigger problem. Okay, you're doing it in smaller chunks and you can see what the value of those chunks are really simply. So stay with the long method until you really understand exactly what you're doing and, and, and feel comfortable working them out with, with very few mistakes. Okay, but if you are someone who gets it and you've done all of that, you've done uh, your long method, you fully understand that you're partitioning and you're doing it in small bits, move into your short method. It's more effective, it's quicker, you can start to move in on with your multiplication more effectively, okay? All right, that leads us nicely into what's next. Well, today we've been looking at a three-digit number multiplied by a one-digit number. We could simply do a four-digit number by a one-digit number, five-digit number by a one-digit number, just by adding those extra steps. It doesn't actually make it any harder, it just makes it longer. So what is next? Next becomes a three-digit number by a two-digit number, or a multiple digit multiplied by a multiple digit. Okay, that is a little bit harder. It's our next step and it will probably be the next thing you're looking at either in school or in your textbook or just in your own learning journey. So search my next video for that if that's what you're looking for or that's where, you're, that's where your stage is. All right guys, please give us a huge thumbs up, massive like and subscribe to this channel please. It's really helpful, it'll be really great. Thank you very, very much and I hope this video has been useful to you. Uh, yeah, peace out, your maths hero, gone.